Hi everybody, I'm Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and we're here to offer you insight and indeed information about the board games you might want to have in your collection. So this is one of those rare games that had me sold from its title. So here's five things I think you need to know about a vast, the mysterious manner. Mysteries, manners, what's not to love? Vast the Mysterious Manor has you and your friends playing a host of characters in a pretty creepy house. Each role is unique, has different abilities and their own victory condition. On your turn you'll activate your abilities to progress towards winning while trying to interfere with each other's plans at the same time. The game ends once someone has completed their objective. Thing 1. What's this game all about? Well, Vast the Mysterious Manor seems to have less of a theme and more of a setting. And it's definitely kind of this fun, horror, you know, mild peril, Adam's Family vibes. And it's one that I particularly enjoyed and was definitely drawn to. And I couldn't help but also be reminded of kind of a murder mystery genre as you wander around this manor in the dark, stumbling upon God knows what or who, and not really knowing what everyone else is up to. It definitely taps into all those kind of feelings. Your characters that you play, yeah, you don't know a lot about them, but there's something about their abilities that gives you a good feel for what kind of character they are or the type of things they might do. So it doesn't leave them feeling disjointed from the game itself. If you're looking for a similar game to Vast, well, you have to compare it to Root because, you know, it's from the same company. But for me, I actually prefer this to Root. And I think this is because um, that in Root, um, everyone is trying to get victory points to win the game. Here, everyone has got their own objectives and it just feels a little bit more focused to me. Thing two, mechanics. Well, the main mechanic here is the fact that everyone has their own unique mechanics. Um, so each character does something different, interacts differently, moves around the board in a different way, etc. And this is, in all honesty, pretty fun and exciting. I had a lot of fun wanting to try out all the different characters, learn how they worked. And if you didn't like a particular character, well, there's more to choose from. And I'm pretty sure you'll find one that will match your gameplay style. However, because everybody is so different, you're left with this problem that it feels like everybody's playing their own little game. And it's one that's actually quite difficult to explain. On a practical note, it means that somebody needs to know how all of the characters work to be able to explain them to the other players. I did like that we all had our own thing to do, but hated that you couldn't choose which group of characters to play with out of the box. Overall, this game has so much merit, but I feel like the mechanics get in the way of this fun setting we've been given. Thing three on the table. I'm not gonna lie, when we first set up Fast and Mysterious Manor, I wasn't particularly impressed by the board. However, as you move around it and you discover new things, you get to add tiles and flip them over. And that does add a lot of dimension to the gameplay. Um, setup is really straightforward. I love that each character sheet or card has got your setup requirements written on it, so that helps speed up the process. The interesting thing here is that the game ends whenever somebody hits their victory condition, so it, it's really up to you, meaning this can definitely be a lengthier game. I'd want to be setting aside some time to play it. The rulebook is definitely good, but not the most helpful. And I think this is just because each character is so unique. And you have to go rooting through the rulebook to find, you know, the specific terms that are relative to only your character. Um, and I don't think that's a necessarily easy feat. Basically, in summary, this is the kind of game that you want to play a lot of to get a lot out of. Thing four, look and feel. Well, it's pretty obvious to me how much care and attention to detail has been put into Vast and Mysterious Manor. Everything in this box feels very deluxe and very high quality. I'm a huge fan of the artwork. I think it's so fun and whimsical and fits with this theme incredibly well. My favorite component is probably the player boards. They're these huge chunky pieces of cardboard and they make playing the game so much easier. And of course, we can't not talk about the miniatures, which are made in these crazy psychedelic colors um, and are beautifully rendered. There's something about this game that can't help but appeal to my inner child. Thing five. Is this game any good? Well, Vast and Mysterious Manor really does have a lot going for it. It's really fun to play your own unique character and have your own goal and way to win that's different from everybody else's. 
It's also nice to see your character progress as you make steps towards your end game condition. Um, but not only that, the character you play as are, are really interesting and fun. So you can be like a spider, a paladin, a warlock, a set of skeletons, each with their own very cool names, or even play as the manor itself. And all of these are kind of exciting and you're going to want to try them all out and play with all of them. But this is where the problem is. Teaching this game is extremely hard because everyone's character is so different. And this type of gameplay does not lend itself well to introducing it to a new player. You kind of need to be familiar with what you're doing or everyone needs to be on kind of the same skill level. And of course, when you get your character board, it explains how you play your character, but not fully enough that you don't need to go and read the rule book. Meaning everybody who plays this game at the table really needs to read the rule book to fully understand how to play. And that for me is incredibly problematic. And after all that, the game kicks you in the teeth. See, when I opened the box first and I looked at all the really cool characters, I decided I wanted to play the manor. Like, how cool is that? You could play as the actual building, move stuff on the board, you know, mess with your opponents. Sounded right up my alley. The problem is that you can only play with particular characters if you have particular player accounts. So at two players, which is what I normally play at, you only have access to three characters in the entire game. So that's the paladin, the spider, and the, and the skeleton. And of course, somebody always has to play the spider. Meaning that the only way I could play with the manor was if I had more friends to play with. I think that's such a kick in the teeth. Um, I was so excited to play this game and then you can't access the one you want. Like what's the point in saying that this is good for two players when you can't play with everything in the box? Fast and Mysterious Manor is a really exciting and really, really fun game. However, I'm never going to be able to play it the way I'd like to and I think that's particularly unfair. Do I think you should have Vast and Mysterious Manor in your collection? Well, if you're already familiar with Root and have a, a group that enjoys playing it, well then this is definitely a step up from Root in my estimation. Otherwise, this is a really fun haunted house game, but you're going to want to have a number of people available to play with you to be able to actually get value out of the box. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition. To hear about further videos and future reviews, why not click on the subscribe button below? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about Vast and Mysterious Manor, why not ask? I'll, I'll actually answer you. And until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.